and to be perfectly honest, the hardest part probably of our job is getting that selection right, um, but more importantly, how we manage the players post the selection. So how you let people know they're not playing. I mean, you know, players, players crave feedback, so you need to sit down with them properly, explain selection. You know, if there's a rotation system behind it, explain why the rotation system. And if it's form, you know, making sure that the reason you, you potentially have dropped a player gets across to him, um, not just the fact that he's dropped, but also how he's going to improve and what he needs to do to get back in the side. You know, I think the squad dynamic is, 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 is huge and a lot of that based on, on who's playing and who's not. You know, you need to recruit players that suit the way you want to play. Um, I think Alf Ramsey did it with England in 66 with people like Nobby Styles, guys like that. They weren't necessarily the best players in their positions, but they suited the way that he wanted to play. So you need to develop your own style and how you want to play, and then you stick with it. You know, if you've got different players in, in the squad, um, it means you're changing your whole game plan literally for a player or two players. So what we try to do is get a certain type of player, and we want to play a way that... Um, that will bring out his best qualities. All good teams know who their best 15 are, or best 11 in football, or best 11 in cricket. You always know who you, you know, what team you ideally want to put on the pitch. If you have clarity about how you want your game to look, how do you want to play? You should therefore have clarity about who in your squad is best able to deliver that game. So, what do you want from your props? Some people simply just want to scrummage. That's fine. If that's how you want to play the game, then you pick the best scrummaging props. Others want to compromise between good scrummage, but also I want people who can run out field and make X number of tackles and carry the ball. So that will give you a different type of selection. If you have all those players available to you, people who can do that and that, well, what do you want your game to look like? That will guide you as to which guy takes precedence over who. Now, obviously, it gets compromised because of injuries, but then, you know, it, you're then relying on the rest of the squad, and that's where coaching days like this are so important, that it's, you coach all players, not just your best 15, so that when they have to step in, it should be seamless. Too many, between those three teams you're playing against, I think there's a compromise between worrying about the opposition and worrying about yourselves. Uh, you remember I said, what is the game that you're trying to play? That is the overarching principle. So you, it's about you or us. Right, I know how I want the game to be played for England or for Quinns. Therefore, I pick players who can deliver that. And the reason I think our game should be played that way is because I think it will be successful against whoever. Because if you start chaining, right, this week we're playing, so we drop those five, and you're playing, so you get no continuity, nobody's quite sure what they're supposed to be doing. You might say, right, we're playing this lot who we know are going to boot it up. I'm going to pick a save. I'm going to pick a Mike Brown, who's going to, who will never drop one in the air. You might make the odd tweak, but you wouldn't want to change the way you play, uh, in my view, anyway. You've got to re really focus on what is your, your strength, what is your vision of how the game should be played. It's a bit different for them. You know, we, we've got, um, you've got a 40 week period where you've got games to potentially try things and get, you know, get a few things right. Um, you know, Stuart's got four weeks. He doesn't have a massive amount with him beforehand. Um, so they don't know, they can't layer the same sort of detail that we put on potentially over a pre-season and early season games. Um, so they've got to turn up almost on day one and get it right. You know, they're judged um, by results. Uh, and if he sort of loses three from four, but feels that the style's progressing, um, you know, I'm sure that he, he has to have a lot of different conversations than what we used to have. I think they love unstructured attack. I, um, I really enjoyed the three match series where England went out there. Um, you know, people say you can't play the All Blacks at that game, uh, where it gets massively destructured uh, from kicks, multi-phase. Um, and if anything, I thought, you know, England looked good. Uh, I know the results didn't go their way. But um, for me, I was really encouraged to see England actually attacking New Zealand ball in hand in destructured attack. So, you know, for me, I, th I think England got to kick really well um, to make sure they give them, you know, as, as few destructured attack opportunities as possible. Um, but I, I think England have got to keep playing. You know, I'd love to see England keep playing. And I think they've, they've set their stall out to do that. They did it in New Zealand. Um, it maybe wasn't as successful as some people would have wanted. So. You know, the temptation is to, is to come straight back to a, a scrum and drive focus. Um, I hope they stay positive. I'm sure they will do and, and continue to attack them because I, I genuinely, genuinely think that's the way forward.